Once again, everyone, and welcome to the Universal Wrestling Federation Fury Hour. I'm Craig DeGeorge, along with the living legend, Bruno San Martino. We've got a great hour of excitement. Glad you joined us. Let's touch on a couple of the matches of Bruno San Martino. We've got the ace cowboy, Bob Orton, going up against a real uh, up-and-coming star here in the UWF, Sonny Beach. It's going to be an interesting match, Craig, but you have to understand that here's Bob Orton. Bob Orton's a veteran. This guy knows his wrestling inside out, and he also knows every dirty trick in the book. Sonny Beach, on the other end, as you say, is an up-and-coming. He's a... He's a big kid, he's strong, he's very talented, but the question is, can he stand up to a Bob Horton? Well, we're here in the Big Apple, and we do have a big main event. Don Morocco, The Rock going up against the real wacky and wild guy, and that is Cactus Jack. How do you size up that one? Well, you know, Craig, the last time these two met, uh, I'm sure people remember what UWF, the bloody match here. Mm. And, uh, of course, Cactus was the one that did all the bleeding. Cactus Jack just swore that he's going to get revenge. At this time, he says it's going to be Morocco's going to be bleeding. We'll see about we'll that. See. Right now, let's get to the opening matches, and let's go to Frankie E. Thank you very much, Craig and Bruno. We have a very exciting lineup of action coming your way tonight, so let's get right to the card in hand. Starting the night's activities is the Kansas City Bomber, Steve the Wild Thing Ray. The ever-dangerous crowd favorite, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. The always rugged and near-perfect tactician, Cowboy Bob Orton. Going up against the man with tan, riding in on his surfboard, Sunny Beach. And the feature brawl with the psychotic and very unpredictable Cactus Jack. Facing off against the popular rock from Hawaii, Don Morocco. Our weekly walk on the wild side with Captain Lou in the captain's corner. And an Ask the Wrestler letter will be open for one of our lucky viewers. The UWF power line is waiting for your call. 1-900-420-4UWF. Hey, call the UWF power line now. Steve, the Royal Thing, Royal! to George with Bruno San Martino, and you see the patriotism displayed by Steve the Wild Thing Ray. Steve the Wild Thing Ray, and he's waving the flag. Talk about a colorful guy. Uh, look at this. Look at the uh, look at the uh, jacket that he's wearing. Whoa. <laughs> now, though, I understand, <laughs> Bernie, that he borrowed your old tights. Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> No, I think not. I think not. Uh, but you know what, uh, Craig? This guy, he really is exciting to watch. This is a guy who goes in that ring. And he really enjoys it. He loves he loves to wrestle, and it shows every second he's in there. Even when he's in the receiving end, he, you know he's still he's still got that that look, he, that yeah. drive. Yeah, he perfect. doesn't yeah. lay back. He doesn't uh, try to get away uh, from the, getting the worst of it. He's just a, a guy that gives it his all. His opponent, of course, may be a familiar face to you. That's Carmine Albano, the nephew of Lou Albano, an amateur wrestler. Goes at 260. Steve the Wild Thing Ray at 255, and. Carmine Albano's attire a little bit more similar to what Bruno used to wear, except, uh, <laughs> Well, all I ever wore my uh, whole career, yeah. I said a pair of tights and a pair of boots. That's it. What was that colorful color, color yet? The, the, the three different colors I wore basically were, uh, black. Black. Yeah, blue. I wore, 
the blue tights and uh, green. They also wear green. Very nice. Okay. That's it. Well, now that you have that down and uh, you know the trivia answer, let's get to the match here. Wild Thing has been very impressive here on the UWF. Yeah, he really is. And, uh, you know, a big kid, 255 pounds. He's tall, you know, and it's well distributed. Uh, he, he looks well. Although Fairman and Bonner, 260 pounds, a little bit bigger. He, he too, is a big kid. They're very evenly matched as far as size, height, and weight. A bit filling each other out, but come on, guys. Now let's start seeing some action. Well, see the Wild Thing Ray trying to get this crowd here at the tent going. It is so great to be in New York City. Well, he does. You know, if you notice, uh, Greg, Greg, all the matches that we see of uh, this wild thing, Ray, here, he's always trying to get the, man, the, the fans involved with, with the action. Somehow he likes their participation. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he loves the fans, I'll tell you that. And, he's, uh, and they like him because he certainly is an exciting guy. Yes, he is. Not too much action yet in the ring. They're kind of stalking one another. They lock horns. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, right. Right. Just against the rope. Did he break clean? Hey, how about that? He did. He did? He says he used to watch you and Lou compete at the county center in White Plains. Remember that, Toby? I sure do. I wrestled there many times. Well, reversal by Steve Ray. And then they... Carmine says, step back. Wait a minute here. Let me get, let me regroup a little. All right, now, Batty, you can't blame him right now in that typical precarious position. And, oh, boy, he gets pulled out and banged down to the back end the rump area. Not a nice introduction to the UWF. This is his debut for the Universal Wrestling Federation. What happened there? That was uh, a different maneuver. What was well, that? Yeah, well, what happened is Steve Wilson Gray was, was trying to, uh, to, to uh, hip toss him again. Arbine tried to, to get sort of behind it to avoid it, and as a result, he still went over, but he almost landed on his head. So in trying to block the move, he actually did himself even more harm, and he could have done it. It could have been even more serious. And he got himself into this position here where he nearly went down for that three count. this week on the Universal Wrestling Federation Fury Hour. Still to come, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Also the big one we've been talking about, the East Cowboy Bob Orton and Sonny Beach. And later on, Don Morocco, the Rock squaring off with Cactus Jack. Hey, there's a good move by Carmine Albano. Well, they tripped him up as, uh, as he hooked that leg and then just shoved him back and uh, Steve went down. It took a pretty good uh, shot. And now he's working on the arm. Well, he got that arm bar, but let's see what he's going to do with it. Just hang on to it. To me, when you get a, 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 a you know, the arm like that, you got to don't hold it at that. You should be trying to take it down. That should be said. And then that way you can do more. You can actually do more with the arm. You can keep working the arm bar. You can have a lock. You can do different things. But standing up, you're leaving yourself open to too many maneuvers by an opponent. I'm putting enough pressure on it, I guess, is what you're saying there. But he's trying to apply it now to the bicep. Now he's got him into the ropes. Let's see what he does. He puts a foot in, but that did no damage at all. In fact, Ray easily catching the foot. And Albano could be in trouble here. Comic drop. No. Albano, you know, Carmine Albano actually telegraphed it. Oh, nice close line. Line. There's a great clothesline we've seen often from Steve the Wild Thing Ray. If, if you're going to whip the guy center off and kick him, you've got to follow up and catch Mr. Quick. You can't be standing centering. You're giving your opponent, especially if he's quick like like you all gray here you, you know you're giving him too much of a chance to, to counter and that's exactly what he did but what's he going to do now here is he going to watch how battle to get up look out he's on the top rope he's coming flying down Whoa. Nice and that should press. be enough oh boy nicely done the flying body press by steve wild thing ray about to show some size but this was the wild thing man victory after the match. He's very happy. Hey, look at this. Still a little young fella. That's a little young guy. Too. All right, Herb Abrams, the man of the spot with the interview with Steve Wilding Ray. Let's go to her. Steve, it looks like the fans love you. Don't they love you? Herb, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, Herb. You're not here with the wild thing, David. Let's get something straight. In the U 
WWF in professional wrestling today. You're here with all these wild and crazy fans. They're the ones that paid the big bucks. It wasn't me. I'm a professional wrestler by trade. These guys are what made me. And they're the ones that will make me go to the future, baby. So let's hear party time. Good luck to Steve Luambi right here in the UWF. Hey, we want our troops fighting in the Persian Gulf to know we're behind them 100%. And we want you to share our feelings by wearing this Support Our Troops t-shirt. The UWF is selling this shirt to show how much we care for our dedicated troops fighting in a terrible war in the Arabian Desert. Just send $15 to UWF Troop t-shirts. 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California, 90292. Proceeds go to our men and women fighting in the Persian Gulf. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff enters the square circle next on the Fury Hour. I never saw you hit so well. I'm here in three, you're here in one. Phil. Yeah, how'd you do, Jack? In and three, out and three. Yeah. What are you doing? You're playing your best golf, and every time I look up, you're staring at TV. Saturday cartoons make you so good? <laughs> it's a special Golf Digest instructional video. The Golf Digest schools pulled 10 instant golf lessons from their 10 cassette collection. Graphics, instruction, real professional advice, 10 instant lessons. Half hour of the best stuff for a golfer. It's priceless. It's free. Free? with my subscription to Golf Digest. Get a full year of Golf Digest for 1977. Call 800-841-0300 now and get our free half-hour instructional video with your paid subscription. Call 800-841-0300 now. The New York Islanders entering a new era behind super scorer Pat LaFontaine. The Boston Bruins working hard to be the best behind the league's best defenseman, Ray Bork. The Islanders versus Boston, 7.30 Eastern on Sports Channel America, Thursday. Friday, the National Federation High School Game of the Week takes you to one of the USA's true hockey hotbeds and one of America's richest high school events, the Rhode Island Hockey Tournament, live at 8 Eastern on Sports Channel America, Friday. Planning. Where do I get the capital to start this business with my daughter? By investing for the long haul. And forget full commission brokers. I call Charles Schwab. Munis, mutual funds, blue chips, and I save plenty with Schwab's low commission. Every day I tell my daughter, think long term. Make your own decisions. Be your own man. For a free Schwab fact kit, call toll free 800-841-0300. This is Captain Lou Elmano, baby, and I've got the hottest pro wrestling news each and every day. I want you to call the new Captain Lou Wrestling Celebrity Hotline. I said, call now, brother. It's 1-900-LOU for you. Remember that, 1-900-LOU for you. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff, son. Craig, who the heck is this guy, the beast? Look at him, he's a well, character, huh? Unknown parts, unknown weight, and I would assume unknown talent at this point. That's right. And that could be a... Well, for sure he has to take that thing off, because he's got a, a horns there. <laughs> Certainly he's not going to... He can't wrestle with that. Unknown face at this point, too, but he could be in trouble, I was trying to say. Well, if he does not uh, put on... Some sort of effort here against one of the greats, certainly, in the UWF, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Look at that. Looks a little bit That's like true. the Viking, I guess. Kevin Costner might be looking after him for a new part in his new film. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at that. Now he's Tony Esposito all of a sudden here. Former Chicago goaltender. Well, let's see. He may, I guess he's going to keep the mask on, Bruno. Now, if you're going against him, you certainly wouldn't want to go against a guy with a mask, would you? The man with, uh... I mean, a protective mask. Yeah, what's he got? Has he got another one underneath that, I wonder? But it. anyway, the main thing is he can be the beast. He can wear the mask. The question is, that's what he can do against Paul, uh, you know, Orndorff. Uh, it's a wonderful... Boy, what a match that was. And people are still talking about that match against Dr. Death, Steve Williams. 
both of them went outside the ring. Both of them got bloodied up. Yeah. yeah no question about it. That was a, a, a tremendous match, a tough match. But, uh, yeah, the thing that surprised me about the match, though, know, is that even after the match, when you thought they were finished and everybody was in the ring holding them back, they still were able to leave this ring, get at one another. And they still had something left. And just shows you the determination one another had. Oh, drop kick. Drop kick. Yeah, beautiful drop kick. A nice arm drag by Paul Orndorff. And another one. And Orndorff. Yeah, it's, it's, see, Craig, that's a great arm drag. You see how quick when the arm drags Orndorff really quickly on his feet so that his opponent would not have a chance to really regroup and boom, catch him with a second one. And of course, the way to regroup, he chose to go outside the ring, and that's one way of doing it. But that's what I like about Orndorff very quick. When he, when he executes something like an arm drag, he, he's going to shoot so quick that he's, he's already set to do something else, whether follow another arm drag or whatever, while his opponent is still on balance. The succession of that, huh? the rapidity helps a lot, the effectiveness. Look at Mr. Wonderful, in terrific shape, too, good Always in great shape, always very aggressive in that ring. He's all business. From the time he enters that ring, he is all business. And it, yes, it is. He's still always in great shape. Double wrist lock, takes him down to the handle lock. And he really looks determined as well. Always, always. Got that hammer lock, and he's bringing the hand back toward the neck of the beast. I know we've all seen this fellow before, the beast. Well, we don't know if we've seen it before, obviously, with that yeah. mask on. Uh, it, uh, certainly doesn't... Uh, <laughs> well, what was that? Now, he tried to, to make some kind of a move to intimidate the uh, Orndorff. Orndorff got be removed. He wasn't intimidated at all. For one thing, he didn't come close enough to attempt like he was going to do something. He, he was at a distance. Well, that's one way of uh, slowing Orndorff down. Unknown moves, I guess, from the unknown man. The Beast. Flying a choke. Hold now on Orndorff, and he appears to have buckled Mr. Wonderful, who hails out of Brandon, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. Has him up back by the job. Nicely done. Oh, wow. He's had some terrific moves here in the match. Here's Orndorff again. And now he's looking to the pile driver finish. And you know what's coming, Craig. when you have a mask on, no one will know who you are when you take the mask off. That's for sure. Herb Abrams has more. Let's go to Herb with Mr. Wonderful. Herb? I'm here with Paul, Mr. Wonderful, on the Paul, I have a question for you. Is it difficult wrestling these kind of wrestlers right now when I know all you have on your mind is that big lumberjack coming up in a few short weeks with speed, Dr. Death Williams, Mr. Wonderful? Well, you know something? Anytime you step into that ring, my attitude is this. That man's out to beat me. He's out to hurt me. He's out to do whatever it takes for him to win a match. So I'm not going to let him get that chance to do that. And yes, I'm looking forward to that Lumberjack match. Do I have your attention now, Mr. Wonderful? It don't matter if it happens in the Penta Hotel, the Madison Square Garden, you name it, pal. I'll do it outside in the parking lot, anywhere. Because I'm tired of waiting. It's time, time, time again to end your career. Next up, Captain Lou comes aboard on Captain Lou's Corner. Six, six, five thousand. Glenn Miller's Pennsylvania 65000, a jazz classic, and a phone number to a New York classic. The Pennsylvania Hotel, now the newly renovated Penta Hotel. The Penta is located in one of New York's most dynamic areas, just blocks from the city's highlights, and across the street from Madison Square Garden. No matter what your needs are, Pennsylvania 65000 is the number for one of the most legendary hotels in New York, the Penta Hotel. Fans, now you can carry your favorite UWF wrestler and personality wherever you go, wearing these new UWF t-shirts. You'll stand out and be the envy of the neighborhood. Here's where to order either Dr. Death 
Captain Lou, Mr. Wonderful, Bruno, Dan Spivey, Brian Blair, or the UWF logo. Caps are available, too. So order now. This is the Golden Greek speaking, and when I travel, I travel in style, man, all the way. Look at this beauty. Look at this. The Midnight Express limousine. Beautiful, classy, first class, the ultimate in traveling. This is what the Golden Greek does, travel in first class. Take a look at it, the Midnight Express beauty. Take a look inside. All the comforts of home, television, telephone, a little refreshment, comfortable ride. What do you need? And it sits everybody comfortably. Remember, the Golden Greek tells you, Midnight Express limousine, the ultimate in limousine service. And if you heard it from the Greek, you heard it from the top man. Wrestling fans, this is Captain Lou Albano back again this week with my segment of the Captain's Corner. And this week I have one of the greats of the world of professional wrestling, a man that I managed in the past, Don Morocco. Big Don, how are you? I like the shirt. I'd like oh, to ask you a question, right, Big Don. Cap. What do you think about the world situation today and what's going on with certain wrestling organizations capitalizing on our boys over there fighting? What do you think about it, Don? You know, Cap, you and I have been the same. We've always been crazy. We've always done whatever we wanted to do in professional wrestling. But as we know now, professional wrestling, like everything else, is entertainment. Professional wrestling is a great sport. But what's going on now? Our boys need the support. We don't need mockeries being made of people. We don't need jokes being going on. We need to throw our backbone into our truth, our backbone into our person. No support. No, so goofy, some goofy guy masquerading as an Iraqi. No guy, no turncoat marine. We don't need none of those. We need America. Right. We need American don't get together. We need American don't get in the flag. We don't, don't need, we don't need no ex. He's an American. No ex giant burning no flag. He's an American. We don't need no ex goofy. We're American. Put it down, the United States. We are He's number right. one. We're showing everybody right. who's number one. We're going right He's to the right. top. We're staying strong. We're He's staying right. free. We're staying number one. I'm staying with the captain. You're with the captain, UWF, and the truth, and overseas, all together. Bro. What we're trying to say, baby, is that the UWF and Captain Lou Albano and Don Abadagay and Don Morocco, we're true Americans. We're with you all the way, troops. Baby, we're backing you. Be with the troops. Don't make a mockery out of what's Let's going on with the world. The reality is reality. Stay with it, baby. Captain yeah. Lou all the way. USA, our troops. Whoa. America, move. We love you. Woo! Hey, we want our troops fighting in the Persian Gulf to know we're behind them 100%. And we want you to share our feelings by wearing this Support Our Troops t-shirt. The UWF is selling this shirt to show how much we care for our dedicated troops fighting in a terrible war in the Arabian Desert. Send $15 to UWF Troop t-shirt, 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California. Proceeds go to our men and women fighting in the Persian Gulf. Cowboy Bob Orton, rise into the Fury Hour, next! Hey fans, wrestling's living legend, my partner, Bruno San Martino, has written an autobiography. And take it from me, this is one terrific story. The book is now available through the special offer from the UWF. Just call 213-822-4187, or you can send for it by check or money order to Bruno's Book. 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California, 90292. And don't forget, include 250 for postage and handling. What? You think it's easy being Mr. Wonderful? Well, it's not true. People are always trying to throw me around. And to make sure that doesn't happen, I use Dell Weeder's Total Arm Blaster. It's the best way I know to keep my arms pumped and strong. So if you want massive steel-like arms, do what I do. Blast away with a total arm blaster. 1-800-423-5713. Call now. The 
Inside pass to Coleman, and he jams it. Blaylock steals it. He goes to the goal and lays it in. You could be the New York Knicks cross the river into the Meadowlands Arena on Saturday, March 2nd at 7.30 p.m. The first 7,500 fans receive a Nets cap, courtesy of Met Light. Be there. Inside pass to Blaylock. Baseline jumper is good! The Nets are down. Coming soon to Sports Channel, March Mac Mac Madness. It's a two-day chamboree. Senior sharpshooter Doug Overton and LaSalle pursue their four straight championships. But Mac rivals Manhattan, St. Peter's, Iona, and others are hungry for the title. The 1991 Marine Midland Mac Conference Tournament. The fun begins with the quarterfinals this Saturday at 12 noon. Then the semifinals, Sunday night at 7. Watch for Mac Madness on Sports Channel. The next live UWF wrestling card goes back to the Penta Hotel in New York City on Sunday afternoon, March 10th. We begin the first phase of our new 16-man elimination tournament that will culminate the crowning of the UWF Sports Channel Television Champion. Get your tickets now by calling 516-587-4UWF. This next match is one fall with a 10-minute time limit. The referee is Tom Fornini. Introducing a 280-pound Hulk from Santa Monica, California, Sonny B. There he is, Sonny B. Bruno. Well, I've been Tom. He's a big guy. There's no question about him. A big, big kid. Just wonder if he's caught up a little bit too much with the surfboard, though, and the sunshine and the waves. Although, when he does put that stuff aside, we have been impressed. No question about it, but uh, he's going to have a tough opponent tonight, so we will see. <laughs> his opponent approaches the ring accompanied by his manager, the nefarious Golden Greek, John Collins. He is a 247-pound wrestler from St. Louis, Missouri. He is the Cowboy Bob Orton. The nefarious. Very nice, Frankie. Manager John Solis and the East Cowboy Bob Orton, a veteran against a relative newcomer here in the UWF. Well, the problem Sunny Beach is going to have is number one in facing Bob Orton. He's meeting a, a tremendous, tremendous wrestler, and of course we know how he's capable of bending and twisting and breaking the rules. But when you have a John Solis, you know John Solis. I'm sure we've said this before in defense, and some of the old defense remember the Solis brothers, one of the toughest teams ever to to go into a rank. And John Solis. I tell you, as a manager, he's wicked because when his people are in trouble, he always manages to do something. And so it's a great distraction for Sonny Beach, and we just have to wait to see how he can cope with the situation. You don't want it to become a one-on-two situation when you don't have a manager to worry about, but that can happen when you end up on the wrong side of the ring, the wrong part of town. That's right. And I guess anything away from the beach is the wrong part of town for Sonny. It appears to have won the crowd over. Although that is pretty easy to do when you're going up against the likes of the East. That's for sure. We know that Bob Horton is not the love guy by his family. No. Is he? And look at him. He's knowing away already at the bicep of Sunny Beach. There's Collis. Well tanned. Well, well, keep an eye on him, as Bruno said. But you know, Craig, as we said, you know, I know people don't like uh, Horton because they see him. But, but you can't take away the man's ability. This guy is a wrestler. I mean, it's too bad that he chooses to be what he is, who breaks all the rules of so on. But Bob Horton, in my opinion, could be an extremely successful wrestler without any of that because this guy's talent comes from a great wrestling family. I remember his father. Yeah. In fact, I wrestled his father a number of times. His father was a very, very good wrestler, a tough wrestler. And he's taught his kids well because uh, this guy is Bob Orton, a tremendous wrestler. Coles, of course, no stranger to wrestling, and it uh, looked like he was going to get involved in a match outside the ring there for a moment. As you look at Sunny Beach, I'm Craig DeGeorge, along with the living legend Bruno San Martino. And look, at John Solis does appear to be more concerned about the crowd than the match in the ring, and that's not a good idea. Beach with a nice reversal on the match. Universal Wrestling Federation action coming to you on Sports Channel America from the beautiful New York Penta Hotel in the heart of mid-Manhattan. What better place to have a match in a great wrestling excitement than the Big Apple? 
Absolutely. Good old New York. I love this town, Craig. Although I understand fans in Florida, keep your eyes on the screen. We will be apparently heading down there in a few weeks. Trying to get a hip toss, but look at that. Beach with another reversal and gets the hip toss on Orton. And Orton is shaking up. And again, he doesn't have his manager helping him out. That's true, but that was a nice reversal. Horton actually tried to catch uh, Sunny Beach with that hip toss. Sunny Beach did it very nicely. He just got him a balance spot around the took uh, Horton. Right now, I don't trust what's going on. Horton is not that hurt from a hip lock. Uh, a little possum here, and I would su suggest that Sunny Beach be very careful. And we did notice Tola stopped signing autographs, and he's back in there now. And you just wonder from the Tola's viewpoint, he knows what he's doing usually if he tried to purposely get lost in the match. You know, the ref does not notice him, and all of a sudden, yeah, sort of, where is this guy? Yeah, when he's in interfering in the match. That's right. The coach, look at him, dressed up with that uh, outfit and his wet shirt and the hat and the whistle. whistle and the coach. Does he have any authority with that whistle? Can he signal a penalty on Sunny Beach? Hey, whistle? listen, I'll tell you what, uh, that, that, that uh, whistle might be a lot more than one might think because keep in mind that he has friends back there. Who knows? One of his boys is ever in trouble. He said signals with that whistle. Right now, his boy is in trouble. Yes, he is. Greeting the turnbuckle. Oh, boy. That time into the steel pipe. Sunny Beach. You've seen how Horton seemed in trouble when he came off the rope. He really did. I'm not sure that Sunny Beach should have come up with that headlock. To me, when you mess in trouble, he should have tried to pick him up, slam him, or whip the show for a backdrop. Something that, that will take the wind out of you. A headlock like this, I don't think it's going to be that much better for Horton. In fact, it's going to give him a chance really to recoup. Don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting yeah. that the headlock doesn't hurt, but a guy like Horton knows how to use leverage to take some of the uh, some of the pressure off, and there he is, and right now it looks like he's going to have the upper hand. Good point, yes, he was in a side headlock, and then all of a sudden you saw that knee planted in the ear of Sunny Beach. Oh, is trying to cover around now. Tola's has really the ability here, Bruno, without another manager to work the entire ring. Wherever the action is, he seems to be in the corner. Well, that could be double trouble for Sunny Beach. Indeed. Well, Beach's uh, face is already red, but it will be a little bit redder Look from the boot of the ace. Of course, Sunny has that uh, great tan. Out of the canvas. Or try to pick him up. Look out. What's that, he going for, a Boston Crab? Looks That's like it. he's trying to maneuver it at. Uh, Beach looks like a Boston Crab at this point with that red tinge. If he were smart, he grabbed those, but don't let him get you turned over because if Horton turns him over, well, they're outside now. He has to break. The referee has to break. Oh, boy, did you see that? Horton lined him up, Bruno, so that when he snapped him back, the head of Beach would rock against that bottom rope with his neck. Yeah, I, did, I don't think I've seen that before. Horton, you can talk about a veteran. We always throw that word out, veteran. I think right there you got a good idea. He knew oh, exactly where he was, and he set him up. Absolutely, absolutely. He doesn't miss a trick. This guy knows every trick in the book. He's, uh, he, he doesn't make too many mistakes, that's for sure. You better be careful not to make a mistake when you're resting the horse because he's the type of a guy who can just take, take advantage of and take the match. So you got to be careful with him. And Sonny Beach that time, he, he got caught there. And uh, when he was by those ropes, he should have hooked that bottom rope and maybe could have had some leverage in not allowing him to do that. And at least it maybe have gotten the referee to have him break and get back into the center of the ring. Sonny known for the wipeout, of course, and the sunset sleeper, the gut wrench suplex, but right now he's taking all the punishment from the ace cowboy Bob Orton, and he has not been able to dip into his bag of tricks. And as we said, he is a pretty good wrestler this Sunny Beach. Yes, he is. He's a young guy, you know. He's had, he has a couple of years, uh, of course, in the professional circuit. But, uh, you know, he, he trained well. He trained long. He, he uh, was in the amateur ranks. And uh, he's a big kid, 280 pounds. He's very tall. Uh, so far, right now, Horton is not flashing at the advantage. But up to now, he's made a good account of himself. He's been doing okay against Horton. Good backbreaker by Sonny. Now he hears it from the crowd. And Horton doesn't like it. The crowd yelling, Sonny, Sonny. Beach's energy back then. He was a runner-up in 1985 with the U.S. National. High school state champion. Right now, that is not helping him. Do you find, Bruno, oh, good foot to the face there, that most wrestlers who have success in the ring were 
talented amateur wrestlers, or is it possible to, to go the route without having an amateur background? In my opinion, the uh, amateur background is a, a definite, definite help to an individual. Someone without an uh, amateur background, to me, will never uh, reach truly the, 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 the tops, and it's been very difficult. Too much time to make up, too much Absolutely. to learn, I guess. Oh, boy. First he got him with a backbreaker, then he landed the elbow to the neck, and Beach... Boy, he probably wishes he was lying in a... Look, 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 look and Eric Cullis, we talked about him, here he gets the foot in. And he is just hammering away with that big 10 valley shoe. Yeah. Maybe it's a 12. 14. Big man. 14, is that right? I wear a 13, and believe me, <laughs> his shoe is bigger than mine. Oh, look at this guy. John Collins looks to be in very good shape, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, this guy keeps in shape. And don't kid yourself, John Collins knows where every camera is in this building. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, I, I was told that uh, he runs uh, quite a bit every day, five, six miles, from sign, but he's not heavy like when he wrestled. When he wrestled, he used to be about 250, 255, now I guess he's about 220, uh, tallest. Now, I'd like to see him run away from the ring area. How about that? Oh, he's doing that. five miles right now. I'm sure Sunny Beach wouldn't mind that after getting those boots in the face. Orton, meanwhile, boy, you would think that all this punishment is just going to be adding up. But Sonny somehow just hanging in there. Well, Sonny's a young guy, 280 pounds, as we said, and he, he can take a lot of punishment. He's, uh, he's a strong kid. He's a, he's a big, powerful kid. And he, he can, it's not wise to take a lot of punishment, no. <laughs> but uh, he can. He can take it. He's going 247 on beach. Again, though, Sonny able to kick out. A big matchup coming up. The Rock, Don Morocco, and Cactus Jack. Plenty more this hour on the UWF Fury Hour. Oh, I'm trying for some sort of slam. What's it? No, he's got more than a no. slam in mind. I don't yeah. know what he's trying to do. Believe me, if it was a slam, he would have slammed him already. He's yeah. got something else in mind. Okay, all right. Good. Now, uh, oh, he puts him down and may get him here. No, he boy, he let him up that time. Now, I don't understand why Horton, a veteran like him, would do that. Again, Torres from the outside, this time using his head, knocking Beach, the referee, Tom Fornini. Oblivious, here comes, whoa, Steve Ray is coming to the ring. Steve Ray is in the ring. And he throws him off, and now the referee sees that, and here we go, how Well, they're in trouble with this, unfortunately. I can see Steve Ray came in because he saw Torres in the first of us on but that's how it actually works. But look it up. Let's see, I think it's Captain Jack. Jack is in there, Bruno, you're right. And he pulls Steve Ray down. Oh, boy, and they're and both he's on. away at the top. And Ray trying to get a knee in there, but Cactus Jack is scraping his face. And he blocks the right hand, and he continues to land away. Beach is completely out of it. He cannot help out here. Headbutt by Bob Orton. Remember what kind of damage that did to Honey Bee several months ago. And look, look at this. Uh -oh. Uh oh, look at uh -oh. Cactus Jack. What's he doing, biting him? They're going to Horton and uh, Cactus are going to let's see, whip them against each other. Yes, I think so. No, I think so. And Jack and Orton hit another drop kick. Orton goes flying out of the ring. Cactus Jack goes flying out of the ring. And I'll bet you what, I'll bet you won't come back in the ring. Told us very nice, tell him, okay, let's get out of here. We don't need any more of this. Boy, did they work together well in that or what? Look at Cactus Jack. Look at him. Look at his face. <laughs> Steve Ray and Sunny Beach look like a natural in there. That's when you thought they were going down. They flipped it around and first so. And although Sam Beach has his hand raised. Oh, you know, Steve Ray, Ray, but I think he was angry well, when he saw Colas. When he saw Colas in the screen, that's what really got him upset. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The winner, the referee, awards the match by disqualification due to outside interference to Cowboy Bob Orton. Well, no surprise there. Let's see what Herb Abrams has to say. He's talking with the East Cowboy Bob Orton and Cactus Jack. Herb. John Collins, have you just got the contract on Cactus Jack? What's going on over here? I got the contract on Cactus Jack, and I got the contract on Big Bob Orton. I got nothing but the greatest wrestlers in my stable, and you people see that tonight. And this is only the beginning, because I am only starting with my stallion. Texas, you have just involved the services of John Collins to Golden Great. John's got me working out. Uh, my pants are no longer fitting too well. I think, I think I need 
about forgot to look like this by eating whip food like cheeseburgers, french fries, and quiche. Get real. A talented, serious athlete like me needs real nutrition. So I drink Joe Weider's Dynamic Muscle Builder. It's got high-quality protein, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and other important stuff I need to beat, I mean meat, my opponent in the ring. And it tastes great, too. And it's just like a thick, rich milkshake. Joe Weeders, Dynamic Muscle Builder. Tough nutrition for us tough athletes. And here's the number, 1-800-423-5713. And it's great. Call 1-800-423-5713. Or send a check or money order to Weeder Health and Fitness, Department DMV, 615 West Johnson, Cheshire, Connecticut, 06410. Here's an opportunity to receive a free copy of William F. Buckley's historic Agenda for the 90s. When you get National Review, you have news and opinions you don't find anywhere else. But I think you know that National Review is my favorite magazine. It's my favorite because it's splendidly written, brilliantly edited, and a pleasure to read. It's informative, probing, persuasive, and challenging. It's serious, and it's entertaining. I think it's terrific. I like it because it's cuts through the nonsense that normally surrounds most political issues with simple common sense. And of course I love the humor. It's a very funny magazine. Yep, no other magazine gives you what we give you. Guaranteed. Call this toll-free number now and we'll send you absolutely free and with no obligation this copy of Agenda for the 90s. For a trial subscription to National Review for only $24.95, call toll-free 1-800-238-3100. That's 1-800-238-3100. 3100. The first UWF elimination tournament to crown the UWF Sports Channel Television Champion highlights the next live UWF wrestling card. That'll take place at the Penta Hotel in New York City on Sunday afternoon, March 10th at 2 p.m. And you can order your tickets now by calling 516-587-4UWF. Hope to see you there. Actress Jack and Don Morocco tonight's feature match is next on the Fury Hour. and goings on in the Universal Wrestling Federation. Find out where the UWF is going to be next. And hear comments from your favorite UWF wrestlers like Paul Wandoff, Dr. Death, C. Brian Blair, and yes, even Colonel De Beers. Just dial 1-900-420-4UWF. 
and find out about the Universal Wrestling Federation. Hey, fans, now you can deck yourself out with great-looking UWF merchandise and be the envy of the neighborhood. All kinds of wearing apparel is available in all sizes and great-looking colors. To order a free merchandise brochure, just write to the UWF, 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California, 90292. Walk in style with the UWF trademark merchandise. I'm Bob Knoll. My official title is Head of Auto Testing for Consumer Reports Magazine. But I really work for you. And there are over 200 people who work for you at Consumer Reports. We test and report on everything from toothpaste to TVs. Right now is a good time to try Consumer Reports because you can get a free trial issue with no strings attached. Here are the details. Call now for your free trial issue of Consumer Reports, the magazine that gives you all the pros and cons of a product, including price. Call now for your free trial issue, then decide. When the bill arrives, pay it and get 11 more issues, 12 in all, including the annual buying guide issue, for just $20. Or write cancel on the bill and owe nothing. And with your paid subscription, you'll get two free books, our 1991 buying guide issue and the updated New Medicine Show. So put Consumer Reports to work for you. Call now. Call now for Consumer Reports. Call 1-800-634-6500. 1-800-634-6500. But you remember the last time these two guys faced each other? It, 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 at that time, I believe we were out in California yes. when they wrestled each other. And I'll tell you what, that turned out to be a very bloody match. And uh, Cactus Jack swore that if he had the opportunity to wrestle Morocco again, he was going to pay and make him pay for every drop of blood that he lost. And I said, so this is going to be an interesting match. We'll have to see if Cactus Jack can uh, can do what he uh, can deliver what he what he said he was going to do. What a Morocco. Morocco looks like he's enjoying this kind of match. You know, Morocco. I don't know how you can enjoy a match with the likes of a Cactus Jack. I mean, maybe you still lose like Cactus Jack. I think it's the challenge. I think Morocco likes the challenge. I think he can get bored with a typical match. He likes different challenges, and he's certainly getting one here. Yeah, I thought you Morocco must be in the vicinity of 300 pounds. He looks big. Yeah. And, oh, good bullseye by Cactus Jack. He really is hoping to work himself back into real good shape here in the UWF this weight's listed at 278 but he looks to me closer to like 290 or yeah. because it does look heavy in captain captain's about 275 they're both big men aren't they a lot yes, of beef in there Don Morocco still lives out in Hawaii he loves water sports big water skier did you see that captain Jack was going to try to give him a vertical suplex See what Morocco did? He dropped on his knee, took the leverage away from, from uh, Captain Jack. Smart, very smart move. Take a big right hand there, though. Hey, listen, that right hand is better than that taking a vertical complex, I'll tell you. Although if, uh, if Cactus follows up with a lot more of those. Yeah. Look out here, here's Cactus Jack. Oh, my! Boy, he landed on Morocco. And Morocco had nowhere to go but pinch against that top rope. As I said, he had his neck right on that top row, yeah. so, you know, it's good. Uh, it'll make you go a little. This is where you look at that choke hole on Morocco. Yeah. Painful to even watch. Referee getting in there now. Finally tells him to release. And he kicks him out. This has been, uh, I guess, the kind of matchup we expected. 
I'll tell you the truth, yeah, I'll, in right. a way. But I, I'll tell you what I expect. I expect it because of Cracky Jack and the way he is. And after the last uh, time that they met, I expected to see, you know, it's a tough match. They're, they're beating each other on pretty good. But I kind of expected Cracky Jack to be a little wild. They're trying to get a chair, table, anything to avenge that last time when he uh, bled pretty badly in the hands of Morocco. Well, it is not over yet. Morocco goes into that steel pipe. And it's not clear. Is Cactus Jack going? He's walking off. Yeah, what the hell is he doing? What's, does he think the match is over or what? Yeah, what he's looking for? He's looking for a chair. He's going to have a tough time finding one. There are fannies in all of them. But then again, he's not exactly the guy to say, excuse me, could you get out of that uh, chair? <laughs> There's one right there. There he goes. So where is he going? What is he doing? This guy, I don't know what, this guy is really got. Oh, oh, he's got the garbage. This guy has a couple of screws loose, doesn't he? Oh, boy. Now, where is that? That's cool. You know how? He clobbers Morocco with the garbage can. Right on the side of the head. Especially on top of the head. And oh, now boy. he gets into the ring. You just never know with this guy. They say I'm predictable. Oh, that. That's the hip buster. Yeah, but he goes from that apron. Uh, uh, oh, oh, the garbage can. I know the garbage is all over Cactus Jack. You can see the liquid pouring out. And he is caught up in that garbage can. I don't think he can get out either. <laughs> he's stuck in it. Well, he's out of it now, I think. Oh. But you know what? Look at yeah. They're going to get this full combat out. If, one, if somebody doesn't jump back in the ring, it's going to be a double disqualification, double count out. And here's, look at, look at this. Now he's got the table. Oh! He may have busted that table in half. Well, he got the table, but he got the worst of it. They know how he's got this uh, tablecloth. He's got the tablecloth around him. He is not going to give him a haircut, folks. He's got it under his neck, and he throws it back into the ring. Holy cow. And what does he smell like, too, after all this? <laughs> what do you think of that? The, the referee's very upset with him. I'll tell you what, the referee's given him every chance not to create a disqualification here because it certainly had it coming. In fact, for one, the referee went outside the ring trying to get him to go back in because he knows that, he, that the fans want to see this match come to a conclusion. But in all honesty, the referee could have disqualified either one of these two several times in that match. got him on a sleeper, looks like. I beg your pardon, you are right. He's got him in a sleeper. Well, he does. He's going to try to find a sleeper and put him out. I told you before, Craig, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Not with Cactus's head. That's the wrong strategy. You're right. You see the way he hooked that ankle and he took the, uh, the arm and just, just shot right back with him. And John uh -oh. Tolis is making is. an appearance. I'm oh, wondering where he was. He is out. Trying to be the difference here. The cheerleader oh, for his new acquired man, Cactus Jack. Cactus is laying on the floor. Morocco's inside the ring and uh, saying, come on, get back in here. And there's John helping his man out. Giving him some advice here. Morocco <laughs> looks like he's uh, yeah, yeah. Morocco, he's bleeding from his ear. Left ear. Well, I'm surprised that uh, that's all there is. I'm surprised the ear isn't off with some of the uh, blows with that uh, garbage can and chairs and, and the tables, uh, you name it. Oh, uh, the guy has used it. The only thing they've left out, I think, is the exit sign here in this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about everything else they have used as a weapon here. Rock will take it down again, bleeding from his left ear. As you can see, oh, Thomas is throwing the one down. He's getting an official and right hand after right hand into the neck. I would be shocked if one time, just one time, if one of Colas is in that ring that he does not interfere. Just one time I'd like to see that. But you won't. You won't because that's not Colas' style. He has to interfere all the time. But he saw that blood coming out of uh, Morocco's ear and he thought, hey, there's a place where he's damaged. Let me see if I can inflict a little more damage to it. 
You know one thing, you know Don Morocco is keeping a scorecard. He just wrote down T-O-L-O-S. So John, better watch out. Now Cactus Jack again going to work the facial region where John Tolos was scratching, clawing away at. Tolos looking for support. He will not find anyone in the pencil. Jack now, right hand on the end of Morocco's hand. Again, the same area. Well, you know, Cactus gave uh, Morocco maybe half a dozen shots to the side of the head. But when Morocco picked him up and dropped him on his knee like that, I'll tell you what, Cactus felt that one. Although, to his credit, look at that. I'll tell you, one thing I'd say about Cactus Jack, in all honesty, I've never seen anybody who can absorb punishment like he can. I mean, I've seen him take it. Uh, back body drops or uh, shoot black outside the ring. And he comes back. What is that? We heard the bell. We heard the bell and... Oh, perhaps. Okay, and you know what I think happened here? I think that the uh, time, this was a 10 minute time. Oh, yes, you're right. right. So I think at the time, let's see, as we'll have to hear from the, uh, officially by the announcer, but that's, I'm sure it's what happened. I'm Tim Paulson, Vice President of Hair Club for Men. And of course, I'm also a client. I'm proud to announce that Hair Club has just made a dramatic improvement in our strand by strand system of hair replacement, the Polyfuse Method. Call our toll-free number now, and we'll send you our new brochure describing in detail our latest innovation, the Polyfuse Method. So why call it Polyfuse? Because by applying a polymer to your existing hair, it will literally fuse with the new hair we add. And believe me, even when I run my fingers through Sean's hair, it still feels natural, like his own, even when the hair blows around. It looks very natural. Even when wet, Gerard's hair still looks like it's all his own. So make sure you call our toll-free number now to find out more about our dramatic improvement, the Polyfuse Method, from Hair Club for Men. Don't forget, we stand behind it. And remember, I'm not only the Hair Club president, but I'm also a client. The UWF Power Line is waiting for your call. 1-900-420-4UWF. Hey, call the UWF power line now. Hey, we want our troops fighting in the Persian Gulf to know we're behind them 100%. And we want you to share our feelings by wearing this Support Our Troops t-shirt. The UWF is selling this shirt to show how much we care for our dedicated troops fighting in a terrible war in the Arabian Desert. Just send $15 to UWF Troop T-Shirt, 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California. Proceeds go to our men and women fighting in the Persian Gulf. The UWF Power Line is waiting for your call. 1-900-420-4UWF. Call me now. Ask the wrestlers a no-go tonight returns next week. Yeah. Universal Wrestling Federation! 